The science is declining in universities. And you think, what? This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I mean, I find now, I feel kind of rather sort of guilty as I came up on the art side. And I'm aware of the fact that most people on the art side tend to be largely ignorant of most of the important issues of science. Um, now, it seems to me, I mean, uh, if you go back to the 19th century, which was... Um, I guess the great period of the novel, and I, in one of my guises, am a, am a novelist, so uh, you know, I think about this a little bit. Um, the 19th century was the age of the novel, and the novel was where you went if you wanted to engage in the big debates of what I can only call life, the universe, and everything. You know, what are the big issues? What are the things we're thinking about? You go to the novel for, the, for these big issues. Nowadays, if I want to go and learn something about the profounder issues of life, I will tend to go to the life scientists. I will go and read Richard Dawkins, Stephen Pinker, Helena Cronin, uh, Stephen Jay Gould. Um, uh, and on the whole, if you read novelists, you'll find we don't know anything. <laughs> we don't know anything. And, that's, and it seems to me that an awful lot of what artists have been saying in this century, whether it's um, Ennui or whether it's uh, uh, Beckett, is, I don't understand. I, the, the, the whole world is a kind of, um, uh, is, is a terrifying mystery. And that's all we've learned to communicate, that the world is a terrifying mystery. It isn't a mystery. It isn't a mystery. There are profound puzzles and profound problems, but it's no longer as it's no longer the mystery it once was. There is understanding that is available, but on the whole, the scientists have not been as good as they might have been at communicating this to the general public. And the people who might, who traditionally have had the role of communicating the complex issues to the public, the writers, haven't known about it. And I think this is a terrible problem. Um, and um, I, I wish there was some way of, 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 of making the two meet more and more closely. And I think, uh, it, it, I mean, I, I, I can only address here what I know to be the case in England. I'm not so familiar with uh, um, what happens in uh, uh, the education system in Australia. But the fact that you can consider yourself to be an educated person if you've studied Hamlet or have studied history... Um, uh, but know nothing whatsoever and can proudly say, oh, I don't understand relativity, I don't understand evolution, all that kind of stuff. No, 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 it doesn't mean anything to me. This is not an educated person. You cannot call yourself an educated person and be ignorant of what science has revealed to us in this century because it is profoundly important. Now, here's an interesting thing. We think that one of the greatest mysteries to us is life. What actually is life? Where does life come from? How do we account for it? Um, now, we unlocked the most major part of this problem when, in 1859, Darwin published The Origin of Species. Now, it's curious if you look at the um, um, difference, say, between England and America, and you'll excuse me if I leave Australia out for a moment, simply because I don't know sufficient about your, your, the education system here. In America, of course, there's always a big debate about evolution because there are, you know, people in the, in the sort of Bible belt who sort of say, well, you know, the Earth's only 4,000 years old because uh, that's, how, that's how many, that's how much you get if you add up all the begats in the Bible. Um, and that uh, evolution is some sort of terrible, sort of monstrous, evil idea perpetrated by um, uh, godless scientists. Um, and, um, but the interesting consequence of this is that people in America who do understand evolution tend to understand it much better than those of us in England who are taught evolution at school and assume, oh yeah, I know all that. Now, one of the things I've, I've discovered... Uh, Douglas Adams will be the special guest on Quantum tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, then on the Science Show on Radio National at noon on Saturday. Stay with us now for The Bill.